Yeah, welcome, welcome. Bluff Council, This is my kind of episode. Yeah, look at us. We just recorded our five favorite films of the year. Great success. Yes. Five best. And now we're doing our five least. The worst. Why are you so mean? The dread. The scum. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who is involved with any of these films it deserves to be banned forever from Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Hot takes. Are you ready? Why are we doing this? Where did they... <laughs> I, I don't know what we're doing. We're trying to get clicks. How do we get clicks? <laughs> yeah. We're about to change your life with how much we hate everything you love. <laughs> Keith. Yeah. This is exciting. Do you, do you like talking about five best or five worst more? A much rather five worst. All right. This, this is, I get more excited for shitty films. And you know why? Because it gives me hope. Mm. Because I can make a shitty film too. Yeah. Like, that these films are out there, I go, Boy, all right, I, I can do it. Yeah. Give me, put me in, coach. I could be this shitty. Yeah, beautiful. All right, Keith. That's inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. I, I aim to inspire. <laughs> let's get let's get right into it. Um, let's. Uh, I have a cut. Only two honorable mentions for these are these are our, our least favorite films of the year. These are obviously subjective, and yes. uh, as we always say at the beginning of these worst episodes, these worst lists, uh, we haven't seen every movie, and I in particular seek to avoid movies. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to like. I have a good sense of. You know, they say don't judge a book by its cover, but I can look at the Blue Beetle poster and trailer and be like, yeah, I don't need to watch that. Like, I don't need to watch uh, whatever the new Aquaman, or I'm not trying to pick on DC. What Did Marvel even have a movie this year? I don't need to watch yeah, the... The, I the Marvels. I, I didn't see oh, yeah, it either, the Marvels, but I, I didn't guarantee see. fucking see that movie sucks. Like, I don't, I don't need to watch Fast X. I am sure there are a lot of films, and not even big budget thing. I'm sure there are a lot of films... Probably worse than the five that I'm about to present to you. So I, I take that, take this all with a, a grain of salt, with that context. I lean into the the, the skid <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I seek out shitty films just to see, but I can't see them all. I have a job and a child, yeah. but I do my best to see <laughs> to see as many bad films as I can. So take mine with a grain of salt too. What the fuck do I know? Could yeah. be your favorite movie, and I hope you enjoy. As movies are for us to enjoy, so enjoy. I hope you enjoy all of them. Yes. And I hope you take every entry on our five worst lists that are about to happen personally and know that they oh. are personal attacks on you and, every, and your taste. Oh, yes. Yes. And your intelligence. <laughs> yes. And your family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your legacy. Uh, yeah. My, my, two, right. my two honorable mentions that I will mention uh, honorably are uh, Saltburn. Which uh, we we just learned <laughs> was one of Keith's favorites film of the year. Check out that episode. Uh, oh. But I did not like Saltburn, and uh, also a film called Sixty Five, which was the Ooh. Adam Driver dinosaur movie, uh, which yeah. was, was not good. It was not a good movie, and uh, you know deserves deserves some a little bit of scorn. We'll, maybe we'll talk about it sometime. Uh, maybe. But let's let's just dive in with my five, and then we'll do your honorable mentions and your five. Okay. My number five film uh, will be the one that requires the most context, the most uh, <laughs> upfront. I need to a lot of disclaimers. Uh, I, w I wasn't able to finish this film, so take it with a grain of salt. But I, I tried on three or four separate occasions and got a little further. And my, my, my dislike for this film, my thoughts that this film is bad are not based upon necessarily even the context or the messaging or the perhaps political ideologies espoused therein. So a lot of you are going to tune out as soon as I say this. Uh, I, but it's just based on this as a film. It's strengths and weaknesses as a film. Uh, my number five is The Sound of Freedom, uh, which was a very polarizing film. Uh, should, should go without saying. <laughs> but remarkably successful. Uh, remarkably successful Brought a lot of people to the theater, which uh, which I'm just really floored by. I can't imagine watching this film with other people. Uh, it, it is I can't imagine watching this film in its entirety. Uh, I'm I'm teasing a little bit, but it, it's a very it, you know what it's about. It's about uh, child sex trafficking and uh, Jim Caviezel uh, playing the 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 based on a true story version of this this man Tim Ballard who who goes and starts an organization to save children from Central and South America and. Uh, 
it's 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 a really rough watch, which could the point can be made and taken that that's the point. That, you know, it's, it's supposed to, it shouldn't be enjoyable watching shit like this. But uh, by the halfway point, I, I just was tired of 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 watching Jim Caviezel pretend to be a pedophile to infiltrate these groups and uh, the 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 long interactions of people talking about uh, children and and kind of what they were gonna do and. And, and all this shit, it's, it's just like, uh, I understand that that's a real problem and needs to be, I think people's uh, aversion to thinking about it because it's so difficult and disgusting uh, would probably be a, a reason why there's not enough attention paid to this issue, this real world issue. Uh, but the, the, as a film, I found the writing to be pretty rudimentary. So you quit your job and you go and rescue those kids. Uh, pretty on the nose. I thought Jim Caviezel, who, who is a talented actor, d despite, uh, you know, what I might think about some of his more extreme views. We are headed into the storm of all storms. Yes. The storm is upon us. Uh, I thought his performance was really one note, and, and I thought everybody, including Jim Caviezel, talked like this the whole time. Because God's children are not for sale. This job tears you to pieces, and this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. And, and every line is being delivered like this, and I, we're exhausted, and we're clear-eyed, and we're, and, and it just, it just, it began to feel very laborious uh, watching this film. So I, I, I don't think it's a good movie, I'm sorry. I'm a libtard, I'm a snowflake, I'm, I'm, a, I'm on Epstein's list. Like, whatever you want to say, guys, but it, it, I, just, I just don't think it's a good movie. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I'm... Keith moving on. was no, his number no, no, one favorite. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. No, yeah. I just, I, I don't even want to, I have no desire to even talk about it, to discuss it. It's just, it's, it's, it's not okay. Not okay. <laughs> uh, my honorable mentions... It's such an easy transition to come back from, you know, like starting here and then like, oh, my fun, yay. So thank you for digging this hole, Everett. Um, my honorable mentions, uh, there, there were two. Renfield, I thought okay. Renfield was, was, was awful and I won't go into it, but I just, I really thought it was bad. I didn't, and I was really hopeful for it. I thought it was like a fun premise and yeah, then made it just really, and trust me, you're fine. Uh, and uh, I really didn't like uh, uh, you people, uh, un unfortunately. I didn't, that, that, so I almost put that in. I was like, man, I really didn't, I think it really missed <laughs> for me. <laughs> so I almost put shock that of, in. Shock I, of the year, Keith not loving you people. <laughs> why is that a, why is that a why? Oh, why? it's right up your alley. Everybody thought it was your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. I did not like You it. people was, I actually meant to include that on my honorable mentions as well. So I'm right there. I'm right there with there you. There you go. So my number five, uh, I, I thought long and hard about it uh, because I feel like this, the genre of this film may need its own, like it shouldn't even be qualified for this, uh, this list because it is a Christmas film. And I feel like Christmas films sort of have just become their own thing. They're not even movies anymore. Almost. But I, I brought this movie back into movie land because of the, because of the stars that were in it. Uh, I, think I, I think I know now. I'm getting a sense. Do you, do you, I'll just, I'll just say the movie then. It's, it's Best Christmas Ever. Oh. It was a Netflix. It was, what movie were you thinking? I thought you were going to say Candy Cane Lane. <laughs> that was the other one. I was going to, I was my other honorable mention. That movie was tough, was really yeah, got didn't weird watch it. Didn't towards watch it. the end. Yeah, but I just decided to leave it out, because I do, I love Eddie Murphy, so I was just gonna say, it's fine. <laughs> but best Christmas ever. So it's Heather Graham, it's uh, Brandy, and Jason Biggs. So these are, these are notable names. Like you, you're, you're getting- Is this like a Lifetime an, original movie? Where did you watch this? No, this is Netflix. It's a Netflix Christmas film. It's a Netflix wow. film. If it was like a Hallmark, Kind of like, you know, one of those random, the girl from Mean Girls that's in like 12 of them. Like, I'd leave it alone. Like, it's not. Hey, you you keep Gracie original... Shot Bear's name out of your fucking mouth, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but those are like a different kind of movie. They're not up for scrutiny, in my opinion. But this movie, I feel like tried to be a real movie. It tried to be more like Christmas Vacation than it did like Hallmark, you know, 
princess and the uh, and the and the and the bride part four. You know, like one of the Christmas princess. You know what I'm saying? Like one of those type of movies. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I just, I couldn't think of like one of those fake, one of those you know, bullshit Christmas titles. Christmas Princess and the Bride. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm trying to say. You, you know, know what I'm trying to say. We get it, Keith. We understand. You get it. But this, this movie is just fucking, uh, it's atrocious. It doesn't make any sense. I, I hate movies that just don't, don't follow any sort of logic or any sort of, like, uh, what world are we in? Why, how are these things happening? They're just happening because the words were written on a page. Someone and thought it was funny. Yeah, they just we're just paid to show up and we do it. And I think what a fucking waste to have Heather Graham, who I love. I love Heather Graham and I've loved Heather Graham throughout her 30-year career. And it just makes me sad to get she her deserves, to leave this film. She deserves better. She deserves better. better. She uh, every deserves every better trailer I see that shitty. she's in now is some weird indie, like not good looking film. And I just don't know why she's why she she's a good actress too. It's not just yeah, that she's she was a good like, actress. A hot I don't chick from understand. The 90s. She's a good actress. Yeah, and that's and that's that's why I put it on the list because I'm so disappointed that like what are we doing? Like, give, give let me write a script for those for those three people. Oh, like, it's going to be sure. a better movie. It's going to sure. be a better movie for sure. So, don't watch it. All right, uh, my number four. I, I didn't pick a number four. I want to talk more about Sound of Freedom. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> number, number four. Uh, <laughs> uh, my number four worst movie of the year is another box office success. Um, wow. Five Nights at Freddy's. Wow. Uh, People I, love it. I know, I know, and, and I'm very happy for it. Like, I'm happy that this is the kind of movie that you and I always talk about. Like, man, a small to mid-budget movie that just goes out and makes a couple hundred million, gets people to go to the theaters. So props, yeah. genuine respect for, for doing that. It found its audience, it found its niche. And, and those people wanted to go see it and, and I assume had a good time. Um, so I went into it like kind of hopeful. We watched it at home and we're like, I think it was around Halloween maybe or a little bit after. It was like, this is the movie that everybody's they're talking about. It's making a bunch of money. And it, it started like, okay, okay, okay. And then, you know, it's you, about halfway through, you're like, oh, this isn't very good. And then when things start happening of consequence, you're like, oh, this, this is awful. Like, this is a bad movie, guys. <laughs> like you can like it. It's one of those things. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna begrudge you your, your enjoyment for it. If you enjoyed it, great. It, you know, it's just good, silly fun, great. If you try and tell me it's like really good or well made, I'm I'm good. That's where I'll take issue. It's not. It's not. Yes. A, it's a poor movie. But you can yeah. enjoy poor films. It's all good. I do quite often. Yes. Five Nights so, at Freddy's. Fair point. I won't see it. Uh, my number four. We're at four, right? My number four is. I, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but it is Ghosted. The Apple TV original starring Ana de Armas and Chris Evans. Back at it again. Those, those crazy kids. It's Obviously, this movie sucks. But here's, here's what I will say that may be of some value. Is I feel like this film is really a victim of today's standards of, how, of, of what film needs to get made because this is what we think people want to see. This movie should have not been some international spy thriller with quirky dialogue during gunfights. Like, nothing makes my skin crawl more than we're in a high-stakes car chase with guns and, and uh, assassins and car chases and cars flipping over, and they're like, but you were supposed to call me last weekend. Oh, no! And they're getting shot at. Like, it just, like, stop it. Like, it, it just ruins every moment of what I should be feeling. Any sort of stakes, any sort of tension, blah, blah, blah. It's comedy. But I feel it's like called comedy. That's not comedy. That's garbage. That's garbage. <laughs> the, but I feel like it's a victim of the studio or whomever decision to say, like, we need action. Every, we can't just do comedies anymore. This movie might not have sucked if it was just the premise of what the movie should be. A, a guy who wants to find love and gets ghosted by this girl, it should be more like when Harry met Sally than it should be Fast and Furious. Why are we making them the same thing? That's my overall point. Like, just make this a smaller story where it's a guy who wants to fall in love and he's pressuring this beautiful girl and over trying and trying to figure out why she goes to him and he won't text, blah, 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 and let there be some clever story as to why, not that she's a fucking trained assassin and she's got to save the world 
and he's got to come along for the ride. None of it makes sense. Sure. I, I did not see Ghosted because I could tell from the trailer that, <laughs> yeah. uh, that this is the de- that, that it would be the worst film of the year. <laughs> like I, I, am, I am sure if I saw Ghosted, I would think it was number one on, on my list. To me, uh, it, it just from what it looked like, and I've read some about it subsequently, uh, it, is, it is like everything that's wrong with modern films. Uh, you, you talking about why is it this? Why? It's because an, yeah. this is the algorithm. This is the algorithm movie. Apple yes. took all of that data that they're constantly mining from us, and they said, well, people like Chris Evans. They like Ana de Armas. They're attractive people. They like them together in Knives Out. We'll put them together. They like romantic comedy. They like quirky dialogue. But they also, we need to get the guys. There's action. There's explosions. There's uh, sexual chemistry. Yeah. Will they? Won't they? Like, it's just a soup, a, a messy, cloudy stew of what what a corporation thinks people want. Uh, yeah. Packaged up in a blue screen background, no one left Burbank, and here you go. Um, so I, I think, I think I know I even haven't seen it, but I do think it represents everything that's wrong with, uh, with, yeah. with studio films today. That, that, and, and then yeah. you would just put this straight to streaming. Like, you, 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 you cheapen the value of this great art that you and I and so many of you love by taking two of the, the biggest, hottest, youngest stars uh, and putting them in this movie that probably cost a lot of money and you just put it to Apple Plus. It's just content. It's it's not really film. It's just it's just something to put on while you're on your phone, while yes. we're getting more yes. data from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. This film could have, might not have been the worst film if if it wasn't because of all of that. Like it is just the cocktail of an algorithm, and so if you change literally every detail about it, it may not have been the worst film. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, I'm not going to defend it. Please move on with your, uh, with your, your list. <laughs> I, that's, that's what I like this strategy, is I'll start talking shit about the movie that you is on your list, and then you'll start to feel defensive about it, and be like, well, you know what? Actually, Ghosted was <laughs> yeah, pretty good. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my number three, to continue this, uh, this unpopular pick trend, uh, Wonka. A film called Ooh. Wonka. I, I, I still want to see it. I know I'm gonna hate it. I know it, but I haven't seen it. Please tell me, tell me all about it. I, I you know, you know what it is. Uh, so beyond, was anyone asking for this? Which is what I hear and, and read a lot about this film. Who wanted a, a prequel, the backstory to Willy Wonka? Uh, beyond that, all those points are true. <laughs> but like, but is it even? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> it is. It is. It's 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 supposedly a backstory to. The Gene Wilder edition. Yeah, but is it? That's my question. I know what they're saying it is. Well, if they're saying it, then it is. No, 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 no. Two different things. They're just saying it is. But does the story actually mean anything to the the original source material? Like, is there any sort of connection other than Wonka? You see how he meets the first Oompa Loompa? Like, it's enough. It's enough. No, no, it's not. He's a fucking wizard now. It makes no sense. He's Harry Potter. He's closer to Harry Potter than he is Gene Wilder. Of course he is. So, but that doesn't, that's not, sorry. I know, sorry. it's on my list. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of the worst movies just, in a year. You're, you're justifying it. I stopped defending I'm this not, film. I I'm hate not. It. I'm just like, uh, I'm answering your question. Uh, no, it is terrible. It is, it is. I just thought, I, I don't understand. I think the people that like this movie just go like, oh, it's cute. It's fun. The kids had a good time. There's some sweet yes. songs. That is the defense of this film. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, for when I first watched it, I was like, oh, this is the worst movie I've seen this year. And then I remembered the, the worst, so I changed that. But also, like, there are there are things that are enjoyable. Like, Olivia Coleman is in it, and it's impossible to ever not like Olivia Coleman and like her performance. I think she's the best part. I just think the film is is just, like, it's nothing. It's just nothing. It's just bland. Yeah. Uh, my 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 most famous consistent gripe. It is all fake. It is all blue screen. Uh, everyone's just singing. There's a lot of songs. I mean, it is like an out and out musical where, and it's the kind of musical that you and I talk about where they just start singing their dialogue. Yes. Um, yep. It's it's just uh, shitty, and and all of that. We could talk for hours about the connectivity or not to the past Wonka stuff, which because that would fill an encyclopedia on why. It's pointless and not the same and a completely different character. Like this guy has none of what makes Willy Wonka Wonka and it's not even right. like that you see glimmers of it. 
You, you don't even see glimmers of it. It's a completely different, this guy is just happy-go-lucky. He starts happy-go-lucky and optimistic and ready to take on the world, and he ends happy-go-lucky and optimistic and ready to take on the world. Boy, is his arc just a straight line of, like, pluckiness. This guy is just plucky, <laughs> plucky, plucky. A lot of things just happen, and he doesn't have any money, but then he manages to open a whole chocolate shop with a magical chocolate tree in the middle overnight. Like, there's just all this shit that if you think about yeah. it for longer than 10 seconds, you're like, this sucks. Yeah. I also don't, uh, my, my growing, uh, my ex uh, unpopular opinion that continues to grow is I, I don't think Timothy Chalamet is, is that great of an, of an actor in general. I don't think he's great in this. I think a lot of the supporting cast is rough. It's super campy and weird. I mean, it's not a good movie. I'm not going to fight you. I, I want to see it just so I can pile on, but I, it makes my blood boil. I, as I've said a handful of times, I've, I think I've said it on this program. I say it to anyone who will listen when I just walk around during the day. <laughs> uh, I think Willy Wonka, as portrayed by Gene Wilder, is a top 10 character of all time. Yeah. Like just a, yeah, just a cinema incredible. character of all time, a top 10. Uh, and 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 to to have him have that character be treated this way, like literally makes my blood Look boil. Look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> yeah, I just I just it just it makes me so so angry that like but whatever, it's money, it's money. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, that's right. Warner Brothers get, making that cash. Families loved it, yep. whatever. My, my, I give this very short. I did not get through it 100%, just like uh, the, the Sound of Freedom. Let's talk about it every fucking time. The, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's Old Dads by... Oh. Uh, what? No, I didn't see it, but I, 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 I saw the trailer and I was sad. Because I was like, oh. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, it's Bill Burr. Sorry, I uh, cut myself off. I, I thought you were vomiting or something. <laughs> no, the great uh, Bill Burr. Old, That's what makes me old sad. Old Dads by Bill Burr. The, and and this, this is all I'll say about it. I like Bill Burr as a stand-up comedian. But this is, this is a prime example of what is funny in one medium is not in another. It is not, comedy is not universal across all different mediums of how we get comedy. Sketch comedy, stand-up comedy, film comedy, these are all different things. They should be treated differently. This movie is just Bill Burr's stand-up set in a movie, and it doesn't work. I could not get through it. it come, it's just all awful. It's awful. But if his stand-up routine, hilarious, and it's great, but they're just very, very different, and we need to stop pretending that all comedy is the same, it is different. There is nuance to film comedy. Please give a shit. Yeah, I, uh, in the trailer, how I knew it was going to be bad was that uh, the, 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 there were six just recycled bits. I'm a big Bill Burr fan. Uh, yeah. Big Bill Burr fan, so I know I know a lot of his, you know I've seen all of his specials. I know his material, and when he's just saying the same shit that I've heard him say in four or five different specials, yeah, oh, let me take all my dad material and just make a movie out of it. Like that's yeah, that's lazy. It's recycled. It's, it's lazy. Cheap. It's lazy. It's cheap. It's 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 just dis It's the reason why comedy movies are di are, di are dead because yeah. they just think that this is it translates. Just yeah. just do this. The material already works. They love it. Just fucking do it. Yeah, and it and it's awful. We'll all make a million and we'll, dollars. Yeah. Anyway, I love next. you, Bill Burr. So I'm sorry, but yeah. That, yeah, I can this tell is that not movie, an attack on Bill Burr. I can even tell though that movie I, was it, not going to be good. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever. My number two worst film of the year, The Flash. Wow, interesting. I would not put it that high. Oh, that's crazy, Keith. Uh, I, as I was trying to remember these, think of the, my lists here as we prepare for this episode. I went back and watched some of our old episodes from this year and be like, oh, I'll watch a little bit of the Barbie episode. I'll watch a little of uh, this. I'll watch a little of The Flash. And The Flash, I, I watched a lot of that episode that we did together, and I just got mad all over again. And I was like, <laughs> God damn, this movie. This fucking movie. Like, it was so bad. Uh, so it was an easy choice. Uh, the, the Flash is, is awful and is the culmination of, I think, everything bad about major studio blockbuster motion pictures about the superhero genre about filmmaking today i think it is it is the worst of the worst the nadir of all of these issues uh it's stupid it overpromises it's underwhelming it has the worst cg of uh, uh, in, in, mm. in all of film history <laughs> in all of major yeah. motion picture history uh yeah 
It is, it, 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 it bait and switched its audience. It promised to be something it wasn't. It's nonsensical. It's, it's annoying. It, I mean, you just, I mean, I, I just go and go and go and go. <laughs> the Flash is a, is a bad, is a bad, bad movie. Yeah, it, it is bad. It is bad. I see. I'll, I'll, I'll raise you one though. There's the film. My two is worse than your two. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> my my two is Fast X. Fast X. You saw Fast X? I did. Oh, uh, you I sick had bastard. to because I knew it would make this list. I just wanted to know what number it would be. And <laughs> so you watched Fast shit. X instead of Killers of the Flower Moon. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Because I get more excited. I get more excited for it. I really wanted to see it to see how bad it was. Yeah. And holy shit, there's a story about how uh, the writer of the film had to rewrite the entire script on the plane ride to the shoot, and that checks out. The writing is some of the worst writing I've ever seen in conjunction with some of the worst performances I've ever seen. Do you like surprises? I adore them. In my entire life, everything is delivered uh, on a dime of like, I'm gonna give a quirky, funny joke, and then I'm gonna turn left to this camera over here and then say how important family is. It is <laughs> a fucking train wreck. And they know I'm, their so audience, baby. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know how anyone could be excited about these movies. Like, yes, another one. I can't wait to go see this because they make money. People, are, I just don't understand. I don't understand how you could want to see it. Please tell me in the comments what a piece of shit I am and why you like this movie. Mm. I'll call. I'll, I'll tell you you're a piece of shit. It had nothing to do with this movie. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Number yeah, one. That's great. I am sure Fast X would would have made my top five had I subjected myself to such torture. Yes. And now, the number one worst film of the year. May I be so <laughs> bold? We didn't talk about this ahead of time. As to say, our number one worst film of the year. You think it's the same? You think ours is the same? I think if it's not, you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that may be true. I, I know you. my number one is different than yours. I'll say that. Wow. So I forgot. <laughs> Remind me, please. My number one is a little film called White Men Can't Jump. Oh, I did forget. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that movie sucks. Oh man, that's a top five for sure. It's not worse than my number one. It's not, but it might wow, be two or three. Wow, that's crazy to say. Okay, so yeah. yes, white men can't jump. We did an episode on it. Go, go check yeah. it out. I did forget. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I mean, what a fucking humorless, pointless train wreck of a film. Yeah. Just, just, just yeah. awful from start to finish. I loved that in the aftermath of that review that we put out. We're getting all you're getting all these fucking people on TikTok and shit, man. Like, oh yeah, well, yeah, this movie's really funny. You guys are idiots, bunch of old timers, bunch of old heads, all this shit. It's like, whatever, man, whatever. Like, I you you cannot offend me by anything you say if it's in defense of white men can't jump, the remake. Because you, the remake. you're telling on yourself. <laughs> like, like you're, you're telling on yourself, guys. Like, it's a fucking yeah. bad movie. You can like it. Yeah. You can like you it. You can like it, of course you can. Of course you can. It is you had a good not, time. You were, on, you were scrolling your phone and you looked up every five minutes to see what was happening and it was yeah. fine. You put it on the background of a party while you guys were fucking huffing glue <laughs> or whatever the fuck kids do these days. <laughs> doing oh, yes, whippets. Dude, all this shit that's dating me even more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fucking you know, snorting fentanyl out of each other's buttholes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever the youth is doing these days. Tide Pods. Yeah, uh, it's all those things. That's what they do. That's what they do. Whatever it is, they, yeah. I assume that skewed your taste if you if you like White Men Can't Jump. That film is awful. Keith? Well, it, here's a similarity. My film is also a reboot, remake film. Oh! Do you know what movie it is? Same director? I don't even know who directed this movie. Cal Matic? <laughs> it, I don't, maybe. It's, an, it's a Warner Brothers property. House party? And it is, it's fucking house party. <laughs> house party is the worst film maybe ever. <laughs> maybe ever. And I know I can understand if you like that movie, I understand you're probably going to say that film is not for you, 40-year-old white guy, so shut the fuck up. And to some degree, maybe you're right. 
But I will tell you this, I adore the original House Party. And I grew up on a lot of black comedies. I will tell you that very honestly. I love the original. This film destroys all of the charm of what the first one had. And the sheer, <laughs> I'm sorry to kill our potential interview with the king himself, but the over filleting of LeBron James is, is borderline sickening. It, it makes my stomach t turn, much like you describe uh, the zone of interest or whatever. Like, I it just, it, it, it is Keith's, that. Keith's the zone of interest is uh, house party. <laughs> is, is, is LeBron James uh, in this film. And he's in it too. And it's just, it's just, it's just showing off. It's just saying like, how many cool cameos can I get in this movie? And how cool can I make LeBron James look? And he doesn't even come off good in his thing. He comes off as kind of a dick. He puts the kid in jail. The end of the movie goes off the fucking rails. They, they go on a side quest to, for the, through, to find the Illuminati. And then LeBron James shows up and he's a dick. And then he puts the kid in jail. Don't take the shot, don't. Call the cops. I don't understand, like, why we think this is a good idea. Like, what do you think is good about this? It, it just becomes too big and too crazy for what, like, the original idea was for this, like, teen house party comedy. Like, it just, it just misses the mark completely. Uh, it's fucking awful. It's brutal. I will say... I think the performances are decent for what the performances are supposed to be. I think everybody, the main people in the movie, do a pretty good job. They're having fun. It's what it should be for their performances, for what the movie should be. But the story and the fucking LeBron James love is just awful. It's awful, awful, yeah. awful. And and I don't know how anyone could enjoy it. Yeah, I have not I have not seen House Party. I'm not the House Party connoisseur that, that you are, but... I was looking at the list of films of the year, you know, the year's releases, and I was reminded of House Party and how I read how awful it was. Um, and I was like, oh man, I wish I could watch that because I know it would be like top five for sure, just based on everything I've read and the clips yeah. I've seen and uh, and the LeBron James self, you know, flagellation. Uh, but but then it is the, it is the same director as, as White Men Can't Jump. Uh, Calmatic. That makes so, that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, sadly, I don't I don't know the man. I'm not familiar with his his music video work, but like yeah, you're responsible for uh, maybe the two worst films of, of 2023. I'm not not I'm, maybe. You know, there's only <laughs> you can maybe. only go up. I'm gonna be an optimist here and say your your next one will be will be great. But like wow, that's that's a rough that's a rough one. But then he's he's sitting at home, you know, on a yacht. Yeah, collecting so, so much money. Like, care. But yeah, that's rough, man. I don't think LeBron James signs up for a project without being like, uh, how, how many times in the script does someone talk about how cool I am? I think that's a, it's a prerequisite for most yeah. of his projects, including the, uh, the teams that he's on. <laughs> I think these, these are all things that are in his contract. Tell me <laughs> that I am in charge and the best ever. Ugh. Please let us interview you for our documentary film about athletes, LeBron. <laughs> He, he curses so much in this movie. We, we can just end this, but he curses. It's, I don't understand why he thinks he's coming off so well, because that's clearly the intent of the movie. You should just watch the end of it where he shows up and yeah. honestly tell me what you think, because he comes off as, like, I understand kids are throwing a party in his house and he's supposed to be upset, but yeah. he just curses so much. The, 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 the N word repeatedly, like, yeah. Fuck you, kids! Like, fuck, this ain't bullshit. What do you think? I'm a pussy? Like, what? Like, he is so a great. And then he puts the kid in jail. I was like, why do you? How is this good? Like, how do you? When the whole point is to make you look like a superhero. Yeah. That's the whole point of the movie is to be like, it's LeBron. He's so great. He's the goat. He refers to himself as the goat. Like, it's so awful. It's self-aware it humor, Keith. Self-aware. It's awful. <laughs> Everything. Awful, yeah. Awful, LeBron awful. is just the most calculated public personality. I've, I've ever seen, so I wouldn't, yeah, I'll check it out. <laughs> Just watch that part. We'll watch I'm curious part. what you think. All right. Keith, All what right, a list. We did what it. a time. What a time to be alive. Well, it was, a, it was a great year in film. I've had a great time talking films with you. Looking forward to the future. Looking forward to uh, 
to our Oscars episode, which we'll be discussing here soon, as soon as the nominations are, are announced. Thank you to everyone for watching. Subscribe on uh, YouTube. Hit us up on Patreon like our boy Fish, our, 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 our patron, our one. We're going to get more, and it's going to change the world. So, <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Yes. Any closing words? Absolutely not.